here, we say thank you, Lord. Amen. We say thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Most of us have been working on today and we might be a little tired. We might be a little hungry, but I, I stand to tell you right now, if you're here, you're blessed. Amen. Somebody, if you, you, you if you've been at work and, and you made it through your day, you've been blessed. Amen. And amen. And this is the best nightcap anybody can get. And that is to come out unto the house of the Lord and gather and be amongst the people. Amen. And amen. I thank Pastor Spence for this opportunity. Um, I guess I got just one more thing I got to do since I'm up here. Uh, yeah. I love you. Let's sing that. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. I'll lift you up. I'll magnify. My heart, my mind, my soul belongs. You paid way back, and that's why I'll lift you up, I'll magnify. Let's do that verse one more time. My heart, my mind, my soul, Lord, you paid way back. I'll lift you up. Oh, my. That's why. Amen. Amen. We do thank Pastor Riley from Total Praise Church, who the Lord has put on loan to us here. We're thankful. Someone asked the question why do we have to come to church? this night I want us to be educated so I don't, I don't want us to just to go to church without getting anything out of it you ought to be able to go there and be able to share your faith with someone that's and right so we wrote in our bulletin why we here if you look underneath the welcome Take a minute, as I tell those who are worshiping with us virtually, as those who are here in person, welcome to Ascension Fellowship Church, where we are trying to ascend to be the people that God has called us to be. That's why Ash Wednesday means something to us. And Ash Wednesday is the first day of Lent. It's a time where folk have left Fat Tuesday and the jelly donuts. And they begin a 40 day period of fasting before Easter. In other words, there's a journey to Easter before you celebrate Easter. On Ash Wednesday, ashes that are made from the palms of Palm Sunday are blessed, mixed with either holy oil or water and placed on the foreheads with the sign of the cross. In this tradition, we are reminded of our mortality and humanity as we begin the journey to historical 
redeeming cross of Jesus Christ our Lord. The ashes are also a biblical symbol of repentance, sorrow, and humility. That's why we have met to remember that we are human. And because we are human, somebody said, hush. Because I'm human, hush. Somebody is calling my name. If you would stand up, sing this with us. We tried to give you the words in your program. Let's go back where, hush, come on church, hush, somebody. As we are 
that he called our name. Most importantly is that we listen that when he called our name. Think about where we would be if we were hard-headed and went our own way. And Jesus says, here I am. I stand at the door and knock. Aren't you glad you opened the door? I'm glad. We glad. So that song has meaning for us. God's word for God's people. Yeah. See, our Psalms is how to understand God. All of us have made mistakes, some bad mistakes sometimes. Mm -hmm. That's what 51 Psalms is about. Mm -hmm. David messed up. Mm -hmm. I ain't going to say no mistake. He messed up. He committed murder. He committed adultery. But here's the goodness of God. God is not like us. We can come and say, Lord, forgive me. I want you to understand the meaning of 51 Psalms when you read it at home. Why he wrote this. It reads on this wise. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion. Blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. And I told you what he did. There's some things we've done in our lives that we're ashamed of. For I know my transgression and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done wrong. What is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Yet you desired faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in the secret place. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. God's word for God's people. And we say, thanks be to God. Amen. Let us read our prayer of invocation together. God, on this Ash Wednesday, we come before you acknowledging your greatness, exalting your supreme power, declaring that you are God of our salvation. We are refreshing the multitude of transgressions, known and unknown. Lord God, we bow before you, kneel before you, lay prostrate before you, asking you would, you would intervene for our sinful, sorrowful, and sick souls. Have mercy on us. Because we need you to respond to our human need. Wash us, cause we dirty from our indiscretions. Teach us so that we may live and declare your truth. Purge us so that the shame of today will not be the guilt of tomorrow. Create in us newness of life, happiness of heart. Restore to us the full blessings of heaven. Deliver us from the penalty we deserve, and we will rise up, we will stand up, we will get up and live up to the expectations of your calling on our lives. These things we pray in the powerful name, the name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Amen.
I look out there, and I'm talking to a bunch of ex-convicts. All of us were convicted of sin. Amen. Amen. And then one day, Jesus came yes, and washed sir. our sins away. So ain't nobody got to talk about our past anymore because we got a new beginning. Preach and when up. we got that new beginning, we start singing, oh, happy day. That's right. That's right. That's you, right. That's see, right. When, he can, when you're forgiven by the Lord, we ain't talking about yesterday no more. Yesterday is what? History. We're talking about today. Come on, y'all can sing, oh, happy day. Come on, like you was really happy. Happy day. Oh, happy day. Oh, it's a happy, happy day. day. When I get to heaven. Oh, happy day. I'm going to sing and shout. Oh, happy day. Can't nobody die. Oh, happy day. They won't be able to put me out. Oh, happy day. y'all were happy. Got your little rhythm going. And if you could do it at the club, you could do it for the Lord. Mercy. I, I want to redirect our attention to our New Testament reading. It comes from 2 Corinthians, starting with the 5th chapter, the 20th verse. And it talks about us. I want you to see yourself in these scriptures. It isn't just me reading. I want to see where you are in the scripture so you can apply it to your life as I try to apply it to my life. It reads on this wise. It says, we are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. Think about that. God's making his appeal through us. What would you say? We implore you on Christ's behalf be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As God's fellow workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. For he says, in the time of my favor, I heard you. You know something about that being when God hears your prayer? And in the day of salvation, I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. We put no stumbling block in anyone's path so that our ministry would not be discredited. Rather, as servants of God, we commend ourselves in each and every way, in great endurance, in troubles, in hardships and distresses, in beatings, imprisonments, and riots, and in hard work, sleepless nights and hunger, in purity, understanding, patience, and kindness, in the Holy Spirit, and in sincere love, in truthful speech, and in the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness, and the right hand and the left, through glory and, disglory and dishonor, bad report and good report, genuine yet regarded as imposters, known that as regarded as unknown, dying and yet we live on, beating and yet not killed. God's word for God's people that take root in our lives. Thanks be to God.
as I look back over my life, I can see how your love has guided me. Even though I've done wrong, you never left me alone, but you forgave me and you kept on blessing. This I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. It's because of your mercy that we are not consumed. Because thy compassions fail not, they are new every morning. Great is our faithfulness. Great is our faithfulness. As I look back over my life, I can see how your love has guided me. Even though I've done wrong, you never left me alone, but you forgave me, and you kept on blessing. This I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. It is because of your mercy that we are not consumed, because thy compassions fail not great anew every morning. Great is our faithfulness, great is our faith. Even though sometimes I didn't do what you wanted me to do, Lord, you've been, Lord, you've been so faithful. I can never repay you, Lord, for what you've done for me. How you loosed my shackles and you set me free. How you made a way out of no way, turned my darkness into day. You've been my joy in the time of sorrow. Hope for my tomorrow, peace in the time of storm. Strength when I'm weak and I'm worn, I can never repay you, Lord, for what you've done for me. How you loose my shackles and you set me free. How you made a way out of no way, turn my darkness into day. You've been my joy in the time of sorrow. Hope for my tomorrow, peace in the time of storm. Strength when I'm weak and worn. Lord, you've been so faithful Even though sometimes I didn't do what you wanted me to do You've been Lord, you've been so faithful Even though sometimes I didn't say what you wanted me to say got me up here I'm spoiled yes I'm really appreciate the words that are coming can I be Chris Tucker I really appreciate the words that are coming out of your mouth amen I want you to take a minute to turn to Matthew's gospel the sixth chapter I want you to hear what's being said in verses 1 through 6 and continuing from 16 through 21. 
Matthew 6, 6 chapter, verses 1 through 6. And then the same chapter, verses 16 through 21. If you have it, say amen. The Bible says, take heed that you do not do charitable deeds before men and women to be seen by them. Otherwise, you have no reward from your Father in heaven. Therefore, when you do a charitable deed, do not sound a trumpet bef before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory from men and women. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But when you do a charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. That your charitable deed may be in secret, and your Father in heaven who sees in secret will himself reward you openly. And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men and women. Assuredly, I say unto you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, Go into your room, and when you have shut the, your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Verse 16, Moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance. For they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men to be fasting. Surely I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face. Say, wash your face. So that you do not appear to men and women to be fasting. But to your father who is in the secret place and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break through and steal but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal for where your treasure is there your heart will be also. This is the word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. Just want to share a couple words for you. These are powerful words found in the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus is a beginning his journey to the cross, and he wants to alert them to what's going on. Every now and then, when people really get a sense of fear, they want to make these grandiose presentations where everybody see them doing something different. But there's a time for quiet ministry during Lent. A time where we go about doing things and we ain't gonna have to let nobody know what we're doing. When we lit our text, it tells us very clearly that as Ecclesiastes says, there's a time and a season for everything there is a time when quiet ministry becomes public. One of the avenues that quiet ministry becomes public is quiet sharing. In 
Jesus went about doing his business, not wanting to be theatrical, although folk became theatrical. Many times as he went to and fro, he didn't want to draw any attention, only the attention of the heart. That's what quiet ministry does. Quiet ministry is the sharing of one heart to one's maker. And I say that this Lent, God is asking us to be involved in quiet ministry, to share our heart with him. That as we go through these 40 days, it's not just the practice of giving something up. Because folk can give things up, but they don't give themselves up. When quiet ministry is affected, it becomes public because folk will see you differently without you even having to say anything. It goes about with you sharing your life with God fully. And not only is quiet ministry done in sharing, sharing of oneself, one's obstacles, one's challenges, one's heartaches, one's headaches. Quiet ministry transformed from quiet sharing to quiet supplication. Because when you share quietly, you got to tell somebody. And the best person to share it with is God. And so the gospel says that when you are going about quiet ministry, don't blow your horn. Don't shake your thing. But go in your room. Go in your closet. Because in your closet, beloved, that's what we really can open up. We can say, Lord, I'm tired of these bills. In the closet, we can say things to God that we don't want everybody else to know. Is that right? Quiet ministry is a prayer ministry. Quiet ministry Quiet ministry is a sharing ministry. It's the sharing of oneself, but also when you're in that room, you're making supplications on behalf of your children who are wayward, who you can't get to come to church. And so you're praying on their behalf, Lord, I've tried everything with this child. Help me, Jesus. Because young black men out here are dying, Lord, help me. That's what a supplication is. It says that in my quiet ministry, I have learned that I have limits. I can't do it. And so I've got to call on God. And so in quiet, folk don't see my pain. In quiet, folk don't see my heartache. But there are those who want everybody to see them. And you see it in the text. Amen. Some folk don't want to be quiet. They want to put on eight blocks of makeup. And, you know, they want to do all this so folk can see them. They want to go to Johnny. Back in the day, it was Johnny Walker's. They want to go to Reverend Stroh's favorite store. They want to go to Johnny Walker's and get a new suit. And they just don't get a a black or a blue suit, they get a loud suit. They're not, they're not doing quiet ministry. They're being loud. <clears throat> but quiet ministry says, I'm just going to come to church, to the synagogue with what I got. Because it's not about my appearance. It's about my heart. That's what quiet ministry is about. And I fear today that in church, especially Easter Sunday, folk are not doing quiet ministry. They're doing shout out loud ministry 
on Easter and forgot about the 40 days before Easter. That's what Lent is. That's why we're here, to get focused, to get centered. To say, Lord Jesus, in my sinfulness, help me. Because I, too, get distracted. I, too, get wayward. I, too, get discombobulated. And before long, I get saturated in the mindset of my peers. Help me, Lord Jesus, this Lent. Help me understand that I need to have a quiet sharing ministry. I need to have a quiet supplication ministry. But not only that, are we to reflect on a ministry during Lent? We ought to reflect on quiet sacrifice. Quiet sacrifice. The Bible says at times you you don't even need to let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Is that right? You don't have to let folk know how much you give to the church. Give quietly. Put it in an envelope. Slip it in the slot. We get frustrated and we make excuses by church, by things we've built up in ourselves when God has already affirmed us to be in quiet public ministry. Quiet public ministry doesn't say that I make myself absent from the family. It says I'm going to be present, but I ain't going to be out here doing all this talking. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I do it because I share my life and Zenobia's life so that you know that your preacher is human. He go through things just like you. Mm -hmm. Uh, Some of y'all even told me, I bet you... Lady Zenobia don't talk to Reverend Spencer. Yes, she do. But she just practices quiet ministry. She tear me up at home. (laughs) Very biblical. As we journey through Lent, let us take that reflection. Let us focus on doing a better job at quiet ministry. Let us be in the race because this is the time, this is the season. And we've got 40 days to practice at getting better in our worship, in our service, in our quiet ministry for the Lord. Because God doesn't want hypocrites God wants servants. And so we celebrate Lent knowing that Jesus knows who he wants and we come because we know who we want. We want Jesus because he has saved our sin-sick soul. If you have an offering to give to Jesus, first of all, before you even think about money, Make it yourself. And if you value what God has did for you by sending Jesus with a quiet ministry of going in the highways and byways and speaking to your soul, tell him you love him, but then say, Lord, I love your quiet ministry in the Church of Ascension Fellowship. Maybe you just write a check to Ascension Fellowship Church at 2429 West Hampton saying, I needed that. I need to be still in quiet ministry. We're not going to have plates, but there is a cross in the hall. And your quiet ministry can take you there and just slip something in there. But until then, I invite you to stand. And if you're going to practice quiet ministry, sing with us, I give myself away. Y'all know this. Yes, we got some quiet ministry going on. Say it, church. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. I give myself away so you.
give myself away.
26 urges his readers to gird on sackcloth and roll in ashes. So I want you to understand that it is biblical to wear ashes. It is not Catholic. It is universal. So when someone says, why your church do that? It's a means of us remembering what Christ did for us prior to Easter. Too many folk have become Easter folk and don't want to walk to the cross. Somewhere I read in Jesus' ministry, he said, if you're going to follow me, deny yourself, pick up your cross, and then follow. You can't pick up your cross if you don't remember what he's done for you. You can't remember what he done for you if you don't f remember he too was spent on, talked about, and driven into his closet so that he too can have some quiet ministry. What we're going to do, we're going to bless the ashes. I'm going to ask Reverend Wiley's wife, Lady Riley, to come down because I want them to and do the imposition to their wife. First Lady Dorothy, I want you to come forth so Reverend Stroll can do you. If you would hold this for a minute, well, I'll do it this way. Lord God, we seldom recognize that you use simple things to remind us of what you did for us. So we ask that you bless these ashes that have been used in the old time and you want us to use them in the now time so that we remember what you have done for us. Bless them, anoint them, and help us journey through these 40 days with strength and faith. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. And so, as I do you both, then I ask you to do your mate. Reverend Shro, from dust you have come, from dust you shall return. Reverend Riley, from dust you've come, from dust you shall return. If you would do your spouses. You may be seated. Amen. And so we're going to ask this side to come around this way. Reverend Riley will do the imposition, and you will go back to your seat. Those on this side, we're going to ask the first few to come around. Reverend Stroh. Uh, brother and Sister Joe. Would you come down on this side? Go ahead. You just put it in the middle and you can alternate.
starting song, Oh Lord, have mercy. Sing it, Oh Lord. to the friends of Ascension. I want to take this time to thank you. Thank you for your past support. Thank you for your prayers, your witness, and your testimony. And thank you for your financial support. It's because of all those things we're able to minister from this place that God has blessed us with. I want to thank you for enabling us to transition from our in-person worship to a digital worship. You've probably noticed over the past month how the quality of that service has improved. That is because of your support. As we go into the year 2021, we're going to ask you to continue to support this ministry from this place in all the ways that you can. It's very important. Financially, you can continue to send your tithes and offers that you always have through the mail, or you may take advantage of the Cash App application. The information for that is scrolling at the bottom of the screen. Again, if you need any additional information, you certainly are welcome call the church. You can call me at 262-391-4022. I am Reverend Richard A. Stroh, Assistant Pastor.